skiing. When the air is crisp and clear and the snow sparkles like diamonds in the bright winter sunshine, that's skier's heaven. All over the world, wherever there's snow, skiing is popular of outdoor winter sports. Canada is no exception. To prove that, all you have to do is hang around the railway station any Saturday and watch the skiing specials pull out. And to prove whether the victims really like it or not, well, let's just take a peek inside one of the cars. Like it? You couldn't keep them home with a guard of Mounties. The destination is somewhere up country where the wide open spaces allow plenty of scope for beginner and expert alike. The countries blessed with crisp, snowy winters. In Canada, skiing gradually replaced the long popular snowshoeing as a sport. Ski clubs have sprung up everywhere and their enrollment increases year by year. Old and young, rich and poor have found a common meeting ground on skis. Probably the worst thing about the sport is getting up enough nerve to test, but it looks far more frightening than it is. Once the ski bug has bitten you and you've found your ski legs, a craving for speed is the next development. It's a disease. The symptoms are a body which leans slightly forward, and knees which are held loosely. By now, you're a rabid skier. Then before you know it, everything seems too calm and beautiful, and you're looking around for a mountainside to conquer. Well, how about Deception Pass out in Banff National Park? It's 9,000 feet high and provides a run to test any skier's mettle. That little cabin looks very innocent, but inside it are four desperate plotters. And the plot is to climb Deception Pass and ski down again in the shortest time and with as few broken necks as possible. Even the cook nearly scrambles the eggs in his excitement. Come on, fellows, let's go skiing. A tasty little picnic lunch has been stowed away in the knapsacks, and some additional provisions just in case the trip might last longer than expected. A good skier pays a lot of attention to his equipment. The length of the skis is determined by raising an arm over the head and measuring from the fingertips to the ground. Hickory is the most desirable material. It not only resists moisture well, but its toughness stands a lot of battering and is less apt to splinter. Correct boots are extremely important. They should be large enough to allow room for heavy socks to keep the feet warm. The soles are very wide so that the iron clamps will not touch the boots and chill the feet. The ideal pole is of light bamboo and should reach almost to the armpit. Going up is mostly hard work and scenery. That's Mount Ptarmigan in the background. The old wind-blown tree is a larch, the only member of the pine family which sheds its needles in the wintertime. Year after year, it stands gnarled and bent, yet always hurling defiance at the winds and the weather. Like a rugged old monarch in its mountain kingdom or a lone sentinel mounting guard at the timberline. On up they go. As the climb becomes steeper, straight skiing is replaced by herring boning. Herring boning means much more than merely making nice designs in the snow. With your skis at an angle like that, you can make the grade without slipping. Now the slope gets really steep. This isn't skiing, it's an obstacle race. You've often heard of people sidestepping an obstacle. Well, here is a literal example of it, only in this case, sidestepping is the official skiing method of going up an obstacle instead of around it. At last the top is reached. Deception Pass is conquered. And it took just two hours and a half to do it. 
Now the question is, how long will it take to go down again? But first of all, there's lunch and what appetites. Even the excitement of the coming descent can't dull those. After lunch, there's just time to study the route down to Earth again and to admire the glorious panorama. Everywhere are snow, silence, and beauty. 9,000 feet, nearly two miles. Down there somewhere nestles a little log cabin. How long will it take to get there on a pair of trusty skis? Let's see. They're off. now. Just 27 minutes ago, they were 9,000 feet up in the sky, where it took two and a half hours to climb. As tired muscles begin to stiffen and the setting sun casts long shadows through the trees, the journey nears its end. Ahead looms the little cabin with smoke curling from the chimney. And where there's smoke, there must be fire in the pan. Is anybody hungry? Don't be silly. Four skiers and a cook are liable to be killed in the rush. Ah, well, that's skiing. You spend most of your time trying not to get killed in the rush. 